welcome to this edition of news today a series in which we discuss and briefly analyze the important news of the day let's have a look at today's main headlines the rajya sabha passes the post office bill 2023 to revitalize post offices the president of kenya pays a state visit to india to boost bilateral relationship the global climate 2011 to 2020 report by the world meteorological organization released The IBM releases the first ever 1000 qubit quantum chip named Pondor. World's largest experimental nuclear fusion reactor inaugurated in Japan. Online gaming industry signs a voluntary code of ethics for online gaming industries. Starting with the first main news, Rajya Sabha has passed the Post Office Bill 2023 to revitalize post offices. The Post Office Bill 2023 seeks to replace the Indian Post Office Act 1898. The Indian Post Office Act 1898 was enacted during the tenure of Viceroy Lord Elgin II. There is a need of the new act as the 1898 Act addresses mainly mail services provided through the post offices. It is also needed to ensure better governance for post offices as their services have diversified beyond mails such as the Indian Post Payment Bank and the insurance schemes. Also the need stems from the fact that with time they have emerged as a vehicle for delivery of a variety of citizen centric services let's have a look at the key highlights of the bill the bill empowers officers to intercept open or detain an article which is being transmitted through post on certain grounds these grounds include security of the state friendly relations with foreign states public order emergency public safety among others It also provides exemptions from liability as the post offices will not incur any liability with regard to its services except any liability prescribed through the rules. Also, the Director General of Postal Services will be appointed to head India Post. Before we conclude this news, let's have a look at the key concerns associated with the bill. Experts believe that the bill is a violation of right to privacy as it does not specify procedural safeguards for interception. and exemption from liability may compromise consumers interest moving on to the next news the president of kenya recently paid a state visit to india to boost bilateral relationship let's take a look at important highlights of the visit kenya and india signed five pacts providing for cooperation in a range of areas including sports education digital solution energy digital public infrastructure and healthcare A joint vision document was unveiled to scale up maritime engagement in the Indian Ocean region. The move will help in combating piracy, drug trafficking and terrorism. India also announced a 250 million US dollar line of credit to Kenya for the modernization of agricultural sector. Line of credit is a soft loan and not a grant provided at concessional interest rates to developing countries. Now let's take a look at some key aspects of the India Kenya bilateral relation. Diplomatically Kenya is a strong partner in the East African community. Also it is a part of India's approach to emerge as the voice of global south. In the field of trade the India Kenya trade agreement was signed in the year 1981 under it both countries accorded most favored nation status to each other. The most favored nation principle under the WTO agreements emphasizes that countries cannot normally discriminate between their trading partners. The bilateral trade among both countries currently stands at 3.39 billion US dollars. In the domain of maritime cooperation, both countries are members of the Indian Ocean Rim Association. Also, approximately 80,000 people of Indian origin are present in Kenya. In another news, the Global Climate 2011 to 2020 report has been released by the World Meteorological Organization. Let's have a look at the key findings of the report. The report says that the decade of 2011 to 2020 is the warmest decade on record for both land and the ocean. It says that the northwest India, Pakistan, China and the southern coast of Arabian Peninsula experienced a wet decade. Additionally, the marine heat waves were experienced over 60% of the surface of oceans. Marine heat waves occurs when the surface temperature of a particular region of the sea rises to 3 or 4 degrees Celsius above the average temperature for at least 5 days. 
Also, the glaciers globally thinned by 1 meter per year and the Antarctic ice sheet lost nearly 75% more ice in comparison to the previous decade. In addition to this, the sea level rose at an annual rate of 4.5 mm per year. The report also talks about the key impacts of these findings on human systems. It says that 94% of all disaster displacements recorded over the last decade was due to weather-related events. It also says that four pillars of food security, access, availability, utilization, stability are facing threat and posing challenges in achieving the SDG 2 targets by the year 2030. Having said this, there are certain key recommendations. These include the strengthening of science, policy, society interaction to advance synergistic action. There is also a need to develop a framework for action which is indivisible but diverse, transformative, context sensitive, promotes global solidarity and justice. Moving on to the next news, IBM has released the first ever 1000 qubit quantum chip named Condor. A quantum chip contains quantum bits and serves as the processor for quantum computers. A quantum computer harnesses quantum mechanics to deliver huge leaps forward in processing power. In contrast to the traditional computers, quantum computers utilize qubits instead of bits for information storage. Qubits can encode information as 0, 1 or both simultaneously unlike the binary representation of bits in traditional computers. They function according to two key principles of quantum physics. Superposition, wherein each qubit can represent both 1 and 0 at the same time. And entanglement, when qubits in a superposition can be correlated with each other, that is, the state of one can depend on the state of another. However, qubits exhibit high sensitivity and may cause calculation errors, and the problem worsens as quantum computers' size increases. Herein, quantum error correction is believed to be the only way to produce a large-scale quantum computer with error rates low enough for useful calculations. Before we conclude this news, let's have a look at some key initiatives in India to promote quantum computing. These include the National Mission on Quantum Technologies and Applications, Quantum Computer Simulator Toolkit, Quest Program at IIIT Hyderabad, and Quantum Computing Application Lab. Moving on, JT-60SA, world's biggest experimental nuclear fusion reactor was inaugurated in Japan. First, let's understand what is nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a process in which two or more light atomic nuclei fuse to produce a heavier nucleus which releases a tremendous amount of energy. It is different from nuclear fission in which atoms are split apart into lighter elements releasing energy. All nuclear power plants currently use nuclear fission. Nuclear fusion has a number of advantages over fission. For example, it releases abundant energy and its fuel is nearly inexhaustible. Moreover, nuclear fusion neither produces carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases nor any radioactive waste. Coming back to the news, the JT60SA is a joint initiative between the European Union and Japan and is a forerunner for under construction international thermonuclear experimental reactor. The experimental reactor aims to demonstrate nuclear fusion as a clean green source of energy. It is located in France and is a collaboration of China, European Union, India, Japan, Korea, Russia and the US. It aims to build the world's largest tokamak, a magnetic fusion device designed to tap into the potential of fusion energy. The tokamak operates based on same principles that power the sun and stars. Using a robust magnetic field, it fuses hot plasma and can reach temperatures of over 150 million degrees Celsius, which is around 10 times hotter than the sun's core. In another news, the online gaming industry signed a voluntary code of ethics for online gaming industries. Online gaming refers to games that are played over some form of computer network, most often the internet. The Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology is the nodal ministry to regulate gaming in India. Online gaming in India is governed under the Information Technology, Intermediary Guidelines and Digital Media Ethics Code Amendment Rules of 2023. Coming back, let's take a look at the key highlights of the code. 
it underlines commitment to build a safe trusted and accountable digital gaming industry with a focus on user protection the code has asked online gaming companies to undertake a know your customer procedure as per applicable laws specify on their site the manner of determination of winners and the platform fee charged and ensure that deposits for online gaming services are utilized only for playing games on the platform now the question is what was the need for the code there is a need to control the unwarranted negative impacts of online gaming activities like addiction and suicides due to the loss of huge money as india's gaming market is expected to grow from 2.8 billion dollars in 2022 to 5 billion dollars by 2025 Also the code is needed to ensure transparency and accountability since online gaming is an important part of the vision of India decade and the 1 trillion US dollar digital economy. Now let's have a look at today's place in news which is the country Philippines with capital Manila. It is a news because a strong earthquake of magnitude 7.6 sparked a tsunami warning in the country. Philippines is an archipelago in the southeastern Asia between the South China Sea and the Pacific Ocean. It is divided into 3 island groups: Luzon, the largest island of the country, Visayas, and Mindanao. It is bounded by the Philippine Sea, Celebes Sea, Sulu Sea, and South China Sea. Talking about its geographical features, the islands are composed primarily of volcanic rock and coral. Its highest point is Mount Apo which is an active volcano. Its largest lake is the Laguna de Bay and its major rivers are Cagayan and Rio Grande de Mindanao. As we conclude today's main news, let's go through some quick updates. The Rajya Sabha has passed a motion to end suspension of a member of parliament following a recommendation by the Privileges Committee. The Privileges Committee is a parliamentary standing committee present in both houses of the parliament. The Ministry of Panchayati Raj is promoting Gram Manchitra to facilitate spatial planning by the Gram Panchayat. Gram Manchitra is a geographic information system application launched by the Ministry of Panchayati Raj in 2019. Scientists found elusive D. Witten's golden mole for the first time in last 87 years with the help of environmental DNA technique. This technique is a method for studying biodiversity and monitoring ecosystem changes. Meta and IBM have formed the AI alliance supporting an open source approach to AI development. Open source approach like Linux and Mozilla are developed via open collaboration and their source code is available for anyone to use, examine, alter and redistribute. 25 states including Bihar, UP, Jharkhand and Assam have arsenic contaminated groundwater according to the data by Central Groundwater Board. Arsenic is a naturally occurring semi-metallic element widely distributed in the earth's crust. It is highly toxic in its inorganic form. The oil and gas decarbonization charter has been officially launched at COP28 by UAE and Saudi Arabia. It is a global industry charter dedicated to speeding up climate action and achieving high scale impact across oil and gas sectors. ISRO has successfully returned the Chandrayaan 3's propulsion module from lunar orbit to the earth's orbit. The Pune Municipal Corporation demolished Bhidewada's dilapidated structures in Maharashtra to create a national memorial for Mahatma Jyotiba Phule and Savitri Bai Phule. Bhidewada is the place where they established the first girls school in 1848. Before we go it's time to put your knowledge to the test in today's segment of test your learning
Thank you for joining us. We hope you have enjoyed this edition of News Today. To get the answers to today's quiz and to download the PDF of News Today, make sure to check out the links in the description below.